Hey guys, welcome back. And in today's video, I'll be giving a detailed review on NordVPN and what it has to offer. I'll be covering all the pros and cons of NordVPN as well as sharing my personal experience with their service. So if you're wondering whether or not Nord is a good VPN provider, then you've come to the right place. Also, if at any point you'd like to give Nord a try, you find a discount link available in the description down below to help save you a bit of extra money. Let's start with the interface, which is the first thing you'll see. I find it to be very user-friendly with a map interface that makes it easy to navigate. Even beginners will appreciate the simple download and setup process, though more advanced features may be confusing at first. As for security, NordVPN is known for its many features that prioritize protection. The kill switch, which I always turn on to avoid data leaks, can be activated on the first launch or in the settings. Auto Connect and Quick Connect work the same way, where they can also be configured on the app launch to ensure a seamless and more secure your experience. On top of that, NordVPN's specialty servers offer additional benefits, which are easily accessible from the main menu. I personally go for double VPN since it enhances my online security by incorporating another VPN server and adding an extra layer of protection. And while some may opt for Onion over VPN for increased privacy, it may come at the cost of a slower internet speed. Obfuscated servers are particularly useful for evading internet censorship, especially in countries with restrictive internet policies. Then there's Nord's MeshNet feature, which you'll find under specialty servers that lets you establish a secure connection between different devices. But the only downside is that the setup process is a bit more complicated. Two other features worth mentioning are the threat protection and dark web monitor, which have dedicated tabs like MeshNet. Threat protection is my personal favorite out of the two as it blocks ads, trackers, malicious links, and even malware. And the best part is that your device doesn't even need to be connected to a VPN server for it to work. Threat protection is always on, kind of like an antivirus program, but at the same time, you can go for a lighter version that only works when the VPN is active. The dark web monitor is another valuable but often overlooked NordVPN feature that notifies you through a whistleblower mechanism if their email data appears on the dark web. And last but not least, we have split tunneling, which lets me choose which apps or websites should run through the VPN connection and which should bypass the VPN connection. Now, even though NordVPN's app doesn't show all of their security features, there are some benefits worth mentioning. For example, NordVPN uses RAM-only servers, which can't retain user data. If you're concerned about NordVPN keeping logs, rest assured that they have an audited no logs policy. Plus, NordVPN is based in a privacy-friendly region, which is a bonus. Moving on, let's talk about NordVPN's performance. This provider is incredibly fast. I've done multiple NordVPN speed tests in different locations, even with distant servers, and I didn't experience any significant speed drops, not even when connecting to Japan. On average, NordVPN retains 85-90% to of my baseline speed, which is perfect for any activity. With over 5,400 servers in 60 countries, NordVPN servers are rarely overloaded. Also, their NordLynx protocol is designed for fast performance, which makes it a reliable option for streaming. To give an example, if I connect to a US server and log into any popular streaming service platform, I'm automatically switched to a list of US only content which I can watch without any buffering or lag. This is a great advantage for anyone who loves streaming. And another benefit worth mentioning is the accessibility of NordVPN, which offers apps for all the major platforms, including desktop, mobile devices, and smart TVs. Unlike other VPN providers who often leave their Mac apps underdeveloped, NordVPN's Mac app is fully featured and just as effective as their Windows app. But as good as NordVPN is, it's not perfect. Let's take a closer look at some of its downsides, starting with the Mac OS app that we just mentioned. The app has two versions, one available in the Apple Store and another on their website. And while this may be confusing, it's not NordVPN's fault. The website version allows for additional preferences like DNS servers, different kill switch behaviors, and threat protection, which are features that Apple doesn't seem to like, resulting in an alternative NordVPN version that can be a little bit annoying. Another drawback is related to torrenting, specifically P2P oriented servers that are not available in all countries where NordVPN operates. As a result, you may have to choose a location further away from you, which can impact your speed. So if you frequently use torrents and NordVPN doesn't have P2P servers in your country, keep this in mind. The iOS and macOS apps lack split tunneling, which is a disadvantage shared by most VPN providers. Although this is mainly Apple's fault, it would be helpful if NordVPN could find a solution. To conclude, NordVPN is an amazing VPN service that has so much to offer and is a worthwhile investment for the long run. Despite its imperfections, it offers the most versatile feature lineup, one of the fastest performances, and excellent streaming support, making it one of the best VPN options in 2023. So that's gonna be it for this video. Again, if you're interested in 
using NordVPN. You'll find a link to pricing and discounts in the description down below. And feel free to comment below if you guys have any questions. I love getting to interact with you. And of course, like and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. Or if you'd like to stay up to date with future videos, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.